In today's episode, we look at a turf battle between two gangs. Three hitmen were handpicked from Manchester to kill a kingpin who was threatening an organised criminal group supply in Nottingham. But instead, in a case of mistaken identity, they killed the peacemaker that was brought in to broker a deal between the two gangs. We look into the series of events, the police investigation, and the gang arrests and sentences that would add up to over a staggering 270 years. Leonard Ward was head of a criminal gang who ran a supply of product throughout Nottingham. A tit for tat turf war had been happening between local dealers, with a rival gang pushing to take control of the area. Not only would this bring attention from the cops, it was also threatening the supply to Leonard Ward's turf. Leonard Ward caught wind that the rival gang's kingpin would be in Nottingham at 10.15pm on November the 10th, 2021. Security around him would be extremely tight. It would be the gang's final push to flood the area with their product and push out Leonard Ward's crew from the area. Leonard Ward came up with a plan. This is probably and would be the only time the kingpin would show. A perfect time to clip him. But Leonard Ward would need some stone cold killers who were not known or had any ties to the area. After telling the Manchester boss, Benjamin Taylor, what he needed, Benjamin Taylor then went through his organisation and handpicked three dealers who worked for him, who were smart, ruthless and capable and had no connection to Nottingham whatsoever. Leonard Ward would set up the hit with these hitmen. As soon as the job is done, they'll go back to Manchester. So it would not lead back to Leonard Ward. Benjamin Taylor picked Joseph Boscombe. Joshua Agbula and Michael Mingos. No soft lads here. All three men were big, aggressive and were willing to use weapons, any weapons or even their bare hands to get the job done. Benjamin Taylor arranged for a driver to take the three men to Nottingham. Taylor then drove down by himself also to oversee the hit at a distance and make sure everything went according to the plan. Taylor met Ward away from Nottingham. The three hitmen were to stay in Nottingham with local dealer Jerome Sherd at his mother, Carla Maguire's house, several days before the contract. At 10.15pm on November the 10th, 2021, the kingpin was due to meet in the Meadows Estate in Nottingham. No photo could be given because they did not know what he looked like. The kingpin was not going to show. Instead, Anton O'Connor was sent to broker a peace deal, a well-liked businessman from the area who dressed impeccably. He had been asked by the kingpin to try and broker a peace deal between the two organised criminal groups. A neutral figure not connected to either of the gangs or the criminal world, Anton O'Connor had trained as a practitioner for skincare. His teacher described him as having a natural ability. From this, Anton O'Connor founded his own clinic and training academy where the ethos was, the clouds are the sky's imagination. A very successful businessman, he still visited the area grew up in and was much loved community figure. But little did Anton O'Connor know he was going to walk straight into an ambush that had been set up for the kingpin. At Carla Maguire's house, the three men tooled up and masked up. She turned off her CCTV and wiped the footage of the day. Gemma Ferran then drove the three men and Carla Maguire's other son, Michael Maguire, to where the target would arrive. They were dropped off and waited in an alley by the side of a house from the address where the target would arrive, Wilford Crescent West in the Meadows, Nottingham. The three hitmen were waiting. Now remember what I said, they had no photo of what the kingpin looked like. Anton O'Connor had turned up instead. Beans they did not know what either men looked like, the three hitmen believed Anton O'Connor was the kingpin. Paul Rusherwood, 39 years old, was already in the area and she'd been recruited to distract the target, to keep him talking. Anton O'Connor's vehicle pulled up. As he got out, Paula started talking to him, unaware he was not the intended target.
the three men run from the alley and ran at Anton O'Connor. Boss Coma and Michael Maguire also stopped to brutally attack an innocent passerby, hitting him around the head with a hammer, while the other pistol whipped him with a handgun. Anton was then surrounded by the heavily armed and masked Mingos, Agbula, Bosco and Michael Maguire, interrogating him as he stood alone and unarmed. Paul Rushwood ran back to a car and blocked Anton in. Mingos walks calmly up to Anton and stabs him several times, one blow going through his heart. Anton then drops to the ground. Paul Rushwood pulled up a car and the four men got in and she sped away. She pulled up in a car park where Jerome Sherd was waiting to drive them back to Manchester. Anton O'Connor was still alive. Police and an ambulance had been called by residents. He died not long after at the Queen's Medical Centre. Police found out pretty early on in the murder investigation the killing was over a row between rival gangs, but that Anton O'Connor had not been the main target. He was stabbed after being sent to broker a deal between the feuding gangs. It was vital police didn't just find the person who inflicted the stab wound and killed Anton, but to get whoever else was involved and bring them to justice. After questioning several suspects, police would soon have a lead that involved a Manchester organised crime group Police forces went through CCTV from various cameras, 212 of them, amounting to 786 hours of footage. 638 statements would be taken, with 101 interviews. The community outpouring was off the charts, and many witnesses and people who may have heard anything or any rumours contacted the police. One problem police had which cost them time, it was a very busy night, unravelling and going through if other crimes reported were connected to the murder. The night itself saw a number of incidents reported in a very short space of time. There was a fight in the street, another incident where someone was attacked with a baseball bat and a handgun, a third incident of a car being set on fire with people running away from it, and a fourth incident of a woman claiming she'd been carjacked at gunpoint. None of these were connected to Anton O'Connor's murder. Police had plenty of witnesses that had come forward with information, sick of the gang turf war and wanting to reclaim their community from the gangs. There was CCTV evidence, but it doesn't show the actual attack. Data communications were scanning mobile phones and connecting it with the movement of vehicles based on automatic number plate recognition, AMPR cameras, provided many leads and police soon started making arrests. Five police forces worked on the murder investigation Overall, 11 people were arrested and charged. Nine people were charged with murder. At Nottingham Crown Court on 23rd of June 2023, the trial lasted 33 weeks, with some of the accused taunting Anton O'Connor's family. Paul Rushwood engaged in repeatedly disruptive behaviour. During the trial, to the partner of Anton O'Connor, commented on her appearance, whilst preparations were being made for the hearing. Anton's partner reacted to this, causing Paul Rushwood to approach the glass, surrounding the dock. Paul Rushwood said, at least I'm still alive, shut your mouth, I'm not sat here with my dead son's face on a t-shirt. Joseph Boscombe was also disruptive during the case. Boscombe engaged in repeated disruptive behaviour, including incidents in the cell, which delayed the trial. Boscombe turned to the main gallery and addressing the brother of Anton O'Connor said, you're a dead man. During the long trial, the court heard about the ambush and the police investigation. The jury came back with guilty verdicts for all of the gang. Benjamin Taylor, aged 38 years old, who sent a team of dealers from Manchester down to Nottingham to carry out the murder was jailed for 32 years. Leonard Ward, aged 42 years old, who was head of the Meadows-based organised crime gang that ordered the killing, was jailed for 32 years. Joseph Boscombe, aged 41 years old, he was part of the hit team sent to carry out the murder and he was jailed for 32 years. Joshua Agbula, 
aged 30 years old. He was part of the hit team sent to carry out the murder and he was jailed for 31 years. Carl Maguire, aged 53 years old, was linked to the Meadows-based organised crime group that ordered the killing. She was jailed for 20 years. Michael Mingos was part of the hit team sent to carry out the murder and is believed to have dealt the fatal blow. He was jailed for 28 years. Jerome Sherd, aged 31 years old, was Leonard Ward's right-hand man, the son of Carla Maguire and a member of the gang that ordered the killing. He was jailed for 31 years. Paul Rushwood, aged 39 years old, who set up the ambush, was jailed for 30 years. Michael Maguire, aged 35 years old, was jailed for 32 years. Kerry Ann Shepherd, aged 35 years old, was found guilty of assisting an offender and she was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Gemma Theron, aged 38 years old, drove the hit team to the scene of the murder. She was sentenced to seven years. Anton O'Connor, a man who worked his way up and bettered his life, who had so much love for the town he grew up in, acted as a peacemaker. These two gangs were not going to stop, which was pulling the town into increasing violence. A well-known community figure and a successful businessman lost his life to a bunch of thugs, which shot the community where the people came forward to put the cowardly thugs behind bars for a very long time, totally over 270 years. Researching this case, it was shocking to read the court documents. How the family kept their composure after being goaded in the courtroom is a testament to them. The family statement put out was incredibly emotional, and I must admit, it is extremely rare that these cases affect me, out of over 200 I've covered. I can think of it happening only once. After Anton's death, he had become a father to his first child, a daughter, who will grow up, never knowing her father. I'll end this video on what the family of Anton O'Connor said. We've all come to realise that you just don't lose somebody you love once. You lose them over and over, sometimes many times a day. Every time you open your eyes, as you awaken, so does your memory, and so does the realisation which rips apart your heart that Anton is gone.